And then uh, he's got to get out. He's got to yeah. get out of the Army yeah. because he's so smart he got a Rhodes Scholarship. And, and, you know, the Secretary of the Army said, this is insane that we have yeah. a system like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. sad that it's taken us, you know, 20 plus years to figure that out. Or you could even you could even say when the fall of the Berlin Wall happened, we should have been figuring this out. Yeah. But but hey, you know, this is such a problem. I mean, you're identifying a key thing. You have all these people working in, in, in connection with each other. And let me I, I want to illustrate how challenging this is. I also want to give everybody a buy. I mean, like this is impossible to get right. It's so big, so, so multi-systemed, so nodal that it's very, very hard to map out. And, and who the hell wants to do that? You know, we'd rather just get in our tanks and go around and fuck shit up because that's that's what we know we're good at. So let me just give everybody a pass on this. Everybody has a desire. Everybody's trying to build capacity. Everybody's trying their damnedest. It's just the ship is a very big ship and it's hard to get it to move. When you deploy to Afghanistan or Iraq, you never come back in the same capacity with the same access, right? So, so Major Martin might come back and sit behind a desk the entire time. And rightly so, because you've got to, take your experience and you've got to, you know, develop. But even if you're in the same province, you're never going to go back out in the same capacity and be able to do anything with the lessons that you've learned. You're always learning new lessons. What made me special was that I stayed and I stayed out on the ground and I watched unit after unit. So I could, I could, and you'll understand this grant. I focused, you know, I look at combat like half of an equation, right? And we are the biggest problem. If we can reduce the amount of problems that we create through our action or inaction, then we have a chance of affecting and balancing this side of the equation. If we can't control this side and it's all herky jerky, this is never going to pay attention. And you think about like multi-year partners, like some partner comes in, it's like, Hey, listen, I've got the greatest idea. We're going to do plan A. And he's like the last five dudes. And I've sat in the conversations and heard them. Last five guys have said plan A was going to happen. So go on about your business. I'm going to go on about mine. I just, I mean, if you're literally driving people insane. And they would stop working with us. They would they would act like it, but they wouldn't because we never developed the capacity to transition that relationship and to shut the hell up and figure out what was possible. So we have to improve these things. And then when you do develop a singular capacity, you know, someone like me, I'm working with commanders and commanders are looking me in the eye and saying, you're the largest force multiplier I've had. And this is brigade commanders. This is brigade sergeant major. These are high, highly placed people. But how do they put me into the system somewhere where I can continue to help? I'll go sit in front of a, a poll ad who's a political advisor for a commander, like a general, maybe a, a full colonel. You know, these are high level people and they haven't got the first clue what's happening on the ground. They might go out every now and then on a safari and, and go out into the into the, the combat zone. But for the most part, they don't know. And so I can sit in that room and simply tear apart everything they're saying because they have no earthly clue what they're talking about. They're in what I call the spaceship. And they're so detached from the ground. But there's no there's no home for me. There's no developmental path for someone who's a DOD civilian. You know, it's like, hey, uh, your time here is done. Go home. You know, and so all that capacity leaves. And then when I try to knock on the door to come back in, and I, I'm not the only guy like this. There are thousands of people that have tremendous capacity that we've just pissed away. You know, and that's lieutenants that become road scholars. You think about this, Grant, like a battalion commander who uh, owns a, an infantry battalion. This is for the audience. Grant, Grant gets all this stuff. That's about a thousand people. And then you're like, hey, listen, we have to have a footprint out here. Don't get into any fights because we can't come and help you. You're too far removed, but we have to be there. You're going to make sure the elections happen. You're going to provide security and work with the, the local uh, authorities, Afghan army, Afghan police, Afghan, whoever is on the ground. But do not do anything more than that. It's, it's an economy of force issue, right? It's a platoon. This person sent hundreds of miles away sometimes, away from their home unit. They're so far that no one ever comes to visit them. They get provisioned from airdrops. They're so remote, so rugged. And if they go further than, let's say, an hour away from the camp, they're in peril. I mean, they are no longer in charge of their own security because someone else could easily ambush them, right? So um, that lieutenant is extremely valuable. They've done something incredible if they pull that off. But it's not weighted in a way that is beneficial. Like, hey, you did this thing. You showed incredible restraint. Everybody came back alive. You uh, partnered with your person. Wow, incredible. But that's just doing their job. But I would say that's an exceptionally challenging job to do that. And then here comes the State Department to come out to work on election results or all these other people that have all these things pulling at all of their resources. And you're talking about, let's say, 40 people out in the middle of nowhere trying to survive that's insane, you know, and then how in the world can that, that team create any kind of change? You know, there's not even a road back to town. You have to do a donkey in a car. 
and, and you know I'm not exaggerating on these things. No, no. 